Okay, so just some illustration on how uh, uh, to show some of the codes that were run or supposedly should have run at home. Uh, so to illustrate some of the concepts about uh, the operating system. So uh, this one here is an example of a, so a source for uh, virtualizing the CPU. <coughs> so, uh, are you familiar with make files? Make files. So, make files are essentially uh, somehow of uh, uh, specification on how you're going to to create the executables. So, normally, if you have C programs like this, you need to compile them one by one, GCC minus O executable, and then the source file. If you have uh, a make file, this basically uh, uh, automates the process of the. Uh, building so uh, the basic syntax is you have the targets here okay so all meaning it will build this one so for example you have for the for the executable p1 this will be the dependency that means to be able to generate the executable p1 uh, it will need as the input source file p1.c and this will be the command to the gcc command to build this executable so when you type make it automatically uh, Builds the different executables. Right? So that's basically what we made up. So uh, I think it's CPU.c. So just this example. So intro is in the intro. So, uh, so this is for the code for the introduction. So, so this code here uh, is uh, part of CPU.c. So this is the actual code shown here. So there is a, a call to a function spin. Okay. Where is this function located? Uh, spin. I think it's in the common. So vi common dot h or less. So this one. So the spin function. I hope you learned. You know how to use c. So the spin function has a parameter how long, and then what it does is to simply loop until the time has expired. So that's what we mean by uh, this function, and then this is the get time function, which basically computes the uh, time elapsed. Okay. So uh, shown in this slide, okay, so this is the way to compile the CPU's make. So let's say that CPU dash a. Uh, so in the parameter. So every uh, it depends on the the time. So. Uh, Okay, so one uh, one second. Uh, this is the output. So every one second, the parameter is uh, displayed. So let's say b. So b is displayed, etc. So that's what the, pr the program does. So in the virtualization of the CPU, you can actually can actually run multiple instances of this program, and then you will notice the. Uh, that they are executing uh, side by side, okay? or somehow concurrently. Okay? So, example uh, shown here. So A. So the ampersand indicates that the process will run will be run in the background. So CPU B. Uh, that's the CPU C. then that's the CPU D. A 
anong kulang? Ano na sintas error? Saan? Sa D? Dito? Wala rin eh. Tama ba yung pag-a-copy ako? Or is... Uh, oh, sige, isayin na lang natin. So... Sa tabi po yung sa CPUC, magkatikin po yung ah, percent tsaka yung second one. pa din? Kasi ang gusto kong ipakita dito yung ano eh. Sige, ah... Uh, isayin na lang natin. So this one is CPU A running, okay? So this is uh, so if I stop that, and then uh, it will still continue because this one is running in the background. So we can kill that seven nine five six. So that will uh, stop. So if we add another that's the CPU B in one percent. So there's an error here. Uh, ayaw niya ng ano no. Ah, uh, na muna siya, tanda na lang ganyan. Pwede naman 'yan. Uh, bakit? But anyway, uh, yung gumana ng syntax natin. So just leave it at that. But you get the idea. You can, pwede rin naman, anahin natin. Uh, sige, uh, nag-run yung A, di ba? So, let's try to run B. Kasi hindi ko masabay yan. <laughs> okay. So, you get the idea. So, uh, uh, okay. So, Ayaw niya eh. So, gano'n na lang. Uh, but, you get idea of virtualization. So, yun yung ibig sabihin yan. But, it says this should be the output. Pero yung synth, baka ibang shell yung ginagamit ay hindi ba. So, that can be wrong. So, the same with memory. Okay, so, uh, okay, so this one here is uh, memory. So, this is an example of, uh, sabi natin yung virtual memory, wherein you have the uh, process viewing that it has an entire access to the uh, main memory. So, it's already here. It's already built here. So, uh, so the command line, that's slash mem. Let's say 250. Okay. So, you have here the address here. Okay. So, if you run another process, supposedly, uh, okay. uh, I don't know why it's not working. So, Yung semicolon. Ayan, pwede rin pala yan. Okay, so, you see here the... Uh, okay. The two programs, actually, they are pointing to different memory, but that's the idea. And they are two processes, and then they are uh, accessing the variables. Okay, this memory area here. P. Okay. So, yeah. We stop that and process kill 7994. Okay, so, so I've introduced a, a new command, the kill command, which sends a signal to a process to terminate itself. Okay, so the process will now stop. Okay, so uh, next is. Okay, so threads, so concurrency. Uh, this one here is an example of uh, using threads, but uh, this one illustrates the problem of, uh, uh, what do you call this, uh, uh, sharing 
variables. For example, as shown here, you have uh, a thread, two threads, and when you run them, or several threads actually, when you run them, they're accessing a shared variable. It's possible that the contents of the variable or the shared variable may not actually be the desired output because of uh, concurrency. So here you have the shared variable counter, okay? and you have the worker thread here. And the worker thread, uh, basically, uh, what it does is uh, increment the counter. So counter is a shared variable. You spawn several threads. Uh, in here, you have two threads, P1 and P2. And you should expect that uh, the way they access the variable should result to a correct result. Right? But let's say if you have, uh, what are the arguments? Let's say uh, 1,000. So the final value is 2,000. But if, let's say, you increase the number, the value of count, the, val the resulting value is a different. Right? Because of the concurrency. I showed this last time. Right? So we'll discuss threads later, but an operating system provides mechanism to uh, provide, uh, or basically uh, show, uh, to produce simulated parallelism via concurrency. And this is what happens. So if you say 100,000, so you see different values okay, because of the possibility of conflicting uh, uh, access or instruction accessing a shared variable. Okay? So this one. So there should be some ways wherein the access to the shared variable will not be done simultaneously via some locking mechanisms, which we'll discuss later. Okay, so persistence. Okay, so uh, is there an example here? Persistence. Uh, the file name is what program is this? Okay. IO. So cut IO. So I, what I'm just showing here are some of the uh, example code to illustrate. Uh, uh, the basic services. Kasi ang outline natin nung textbook na to is it starts with virtualization. Virtualization of what? CPU, memory. Okay? And then you have concurrency. This is uh, the previous one about threads. And then the last one is persistence. This is this one. So this is an example of uh, a program that uses system calls to create uh, files. Okay? So if you look at this code, Normally, if you've written C programs before that read or write files, you use the F open to open the files, right? But this time, this one creates, it uses, it directly uses the open system call, which is the operating system level, system, a system call to create a file, which basically abstracts in a way the file system, the file concept. So you don't see anything here like F F open, okay? F open is part of the C standard library, while open is system call, okay? So you can use F open in Windows, you can use F open in, uh, in uh, Linux, but open is not available in Windows. It's implemented differently based on the system call by the Windows. It's an open file for Windows, okay? But shown here, so, uh, what it does, and then uh, this is another system call here, right? Okay. So usually in C, standard library, it will be fwrite, okay. and the parameters will be different. So one key observation here is that it returns a file descriptor. If you recall in, in, in 21 or 123, this is file pointer, right? But this one in system calls, file descriptors are usually represented as integers. So you have f the file descriptor in, and you use that as parameter to the right system call and the closed system call. So those who took comsai uh, 131, when you read write file, so you have to specify. You get the file descriptors, right? Something like this, right? So if I go, to, if I check the directory, uh, the temp folder. So no file here. So let's say file, right? But if I run that this program. There will now be a file, okay? And then that will be the size of the file, and then I can view what should be the contents of the file. Should be based on the code. It should be hello world. So, so you get the idea. So it's a low-level mechanism in which the operating system provides via these system calls, so that uh, 
can store data on the secondary storage. Okay? So this part of uh, persistence. Okay? So are there questions about this? So always remember that uh, our outline will be based on these three, three topics, virtualization, concurrency, and persistence. And currently, we move now to uh, uh, virtualization. And we said that virtualization involves uh, virtualizing the CPU and the memory. So let's start with uh, uh, the virtualization of the CPU. Right? So chapter four uh, is about uh, the process abstraction. Okay? So in COMSAI 22, when you write your Java programs, you first start with abstraction, right? And then once you define the abstraction, you implement them using uh, what syntax in Java? Class, right? So you have, so you say you're writing a game. You have player. Player is an abstraction, and you implement that in Java as a class, right? So the, the goal of having an abstraction is that it allows you to, uh, kumbaga, magamit sa conversation yung abstraction na yun. So instead of saying, ah, yung player, my X, my position, my, my life, my shield amount, etc., my attack power, you simply uh, describe that as a player. And the attributes and the behavior is basically encapsulated in that abstraction, right? So that's also the idea of the abstraction of the process. So when you talk of computers, uh, when you have running programs, usually you refer to them, ah, my program is running, right? You re uh, when you click an item or an, an icon, an executable, you say that the program is running, right? But in operating systems, uh, the abstraction is actually called the process. So there is a distinction between a process and a program. A program is just the executable. It's lying there on the file system. But when it is given, it is uh, loaded by the operating system and subject uh, and scheduled for execution on the processor or the CPU, then it becomes a process. So it's very important that in operating system you understand the uh, concept of the process, right? So the idea of uh, virtualization is basically uh, what you call uh, time sharing, right? So you have a sing uh, an example, you have a single CPU core, Okay? And then you have several programs, and uh, the virtualization happens is that several processes will actually be executing, will be sharing the uh, CPU, the single CPU. Okay? Salit salitan sila in a way. So it's called time sharing. So when a process is running, tapos halimbawa may ginawa siyang something, as may gihintay siya. Instead na maghintay yung ano yung uh, process na yun dun sa CPU, merong ibang process na pwedeng ipasok doon. And that is the job of the operating system. Okay? And the problem with that is it can probably cause some uh, performance, okay? So if your time sharing merong delay ng paglipat ng process, di ba? So what will happen is uh, so you have this uh, CPU here, CPU zero. You have one program. You place it here, right? May hinihintay siya, so tanggalin mo siya, right? And then you pasok mo naman to. So it is the idea of time sharing. And yung paglipat-lipat na yun actually uh, has some uh, performance uh, considerations that must be considered, right? So if you have a system like this. That allows you to uh, that allows you to uh, select. So, alibaw maramian, as you've seen already in the example last time. So, when you uh, okay, the top command will tell you the running processes, okay? and you can actually uh, see there uh, the different information about the process. So, so the operating system, this one has four cores. Now, if you only have one core, the operating system has to decide which among these programs uh, 
is going to be scheduled to be placed to the CPU, right? Because you only have one, you only have one CPU, so you only have, you can only run one process at a time. So uh, the the concept of selecting which process or which or which process to place in the CPU is actually called uh, is called a policy. Policy. So, for example, uh, the operating decides that the policy will be round robin, okay? or the policy would be uh, first come first serve. Okay? So that will be uh, affecting. So in operating system design, it's very important that you specify some policy. Now, let's say uh, the operating system selected this one. And then after a while, it selected this one. So the next concept that must be uh, understood or implemented is mechanism, right? So policy is more on the what, and mechanism is more on the how, right? So how do you how do you switch from this process to this process, right? So that is uh, an example of some design decisions that must be made when you are uh, designing an operating system. So policy would be which process to run, okay? And mechanism would be how, uh, how to switch from one process to another. So this will be, for example, this will be scheduling algorithms, okay? And then this one will be your context switch. May mechanism ba yung processor para makapag-shift siya from one process to another process? So that's what, right? So, sa operating system, we have to be able to understand na yung mga yan, itong mga blocks na to, they are treated as a process, right? And then, as abstraction. Right? Parang top level view lang to eh. Process, 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 and then CPU, virtualize, select which one to run, right? So it's an abstraction. Now, if we zoom in to this, so sabi natin, these are processes, right? If we zo zoom in to these uh, processes, what information uh, the, each, does each uh, process contain, right? Because sabi natin, yung abstraction, parang trinit natin as a black box yung, ano, yung concept, okay? Pero, eventually, ipoprogram natin yan, i-implement natin yan, di ba? So, ano yung information na nandun sa uh, process? Okay. So, these are the things that are uh, present in a process. The information contained in a process. So, the first one is, of course, memory. Okay. So, in this example, we are assuming that all these process are in the memory, main memory already. Okay? Meaning the operating system has placed the instructions and the data in this particular memory assigned to that particular process. So it's the memory address or the address space. Okay? What is contained in each, in the address space of the process are instructions to be executed and the data being manipulated by the instructions. Okay? You get the idea? And in addition to the instructions on the data, is stored in the in the con in the process itself are the registers which contains the program uh, two registers which contains the program counter and the stack pointer. The program counter points to the next instruction to be executed while the stop pointer is used to specify uh, a memory location that will contain, let's say, parameters, okay, local variables as discussed in COMSI 131. Okay? So, if you've taken COMSI 131. Okay? And uh, Perhaps uh, there are also other things. Uh, for the memory, okay, for the memory, right, 
what are the things contained in the memory so so i'm sure this are this is already familiar to you so uh, you have code data uh, you have uh, dss okay? then you have the stack that grows downward and then you have the uh, say DSS here, and then you have the heap that grows upward. Right? And then you have the environment variables here. Right? So this is a typical uh, process memory layout. Right? So everything in the program will be placed in the memory, and this will be the contents of this uh, uh, process. Right? And in addition to that, This is what the process has. Okay? This is what the process has. But the operating system will also uh, have a program counter that describes the points to the address of the next instruction to be executed. Okay? So you've seen this in the debug example. Okay? Do you follow? Okay. So that is the process address space. And uh, in addition also, okay. Uh, file descriptors. File descriptors. File descriptors are important. Uh, a while ago, the, the example was you have uh, ten file, right? And this is assigned to in FD, right? Open. Something like that, right? So, by default, when a process is run, there are three file descriptors that are assigned to the process. Okay? So you have STD in, STD out, and STD ERR. Okay? So when a process is created, it has uh, the, the operating system creates file descriptors so that the process when it writes something to the STD out, it will be displayed to the screen. When it reads something from the STD in, it is accepting the input from the keyboard. So it is always present. When it, in your program, this does not exist yet. Okay? But when the process is created, this will be created for this process. You get the idea? So, uh, Okay, so uh, let's say this one here. Uh, so uh, uh, let's try in he uh, hex dump. Okay, uh, CPU so so this is the binary, the executable file of uh, hex uh, of CPU. Okay? So it's just numbers, and if we use object dump. Minus X uh, CPU. So you see a lot of information regarding the executable file. Right? So this is object dump. So it tells you that it is an executable for 64-bit uh, executable with information such as headers, etc. So these are basically static. Okay? And you have here some symbols that are being used by the uh, compiler okay? and then uh, the next step would be to uh, let's say disassemble okay? and then uh, let's use the syntax of Intel as a disassembly so this CPU program okay, uh, this CPU executable actually is uh, converted into assembly code and these are the instructions that gets loaded in the memory when the operating system executes this. Can okay, you get the idea? So, for example, you have the main function here. So, the main function actually is implemented like this. Right? So, at this point, the way that we are looking at this program is that it's just an ordinary file. Right? It's not yet being executed. And it will be executed only when we type something like this, that CPU A. Or say. 
So that will be executed. And then if we press Control C, the process will stop. It will be removed from the memory. So when so when I type something like this, for example, this is CPU, this will be placed in the CPU and it will perform its task. Right? But when I press Control C, it will be removed from the CPU and some other process will be executing on the CPU. You get the idea? Okay. Now, it's very difficult to observe the behavior of the process if you just do this like do it like this. Okay. So what you can do is you can use a, a debugger okay, to be able to view the uh, contents of the process and then uh, let's say this as uh, this as main for example okay so this view you see the same instructions right you see the same instructions uh, you see the same instruction however this instruction is already in the memory, meaning we'll see it, we are seeing this program as it is in, as, it, as it is being executed. Right? So you see here the addresses right, where each instruction is executed. Right? So that's the role of uh, the operating system. So we have the program, we load that into the process. So we can actually view. Uh, as I said a while ago, it contains. Uh, no, it contains the. It ad when the process is running, it contains the address of the next instruction. So you can actually see that here. Okay? This arrow is the pro points to the program dumper. Right? The address of the next instruction to be executed. Right? So we have a command here. Uh, ir. Uh, ir. So which displays the contents of the different registers. Okay, so for example, RIP. RIP is the program counter I mentioned a while ago. So it says here uh, 4802. So if we this as main, you can see that this is 4802, which contains the address of the next instruction to be executed. Can you get the idea? So that's what we mean by that. Okay. And the stack pointer, so uh, that will be uh, SP, where is SP here? RSP, okay. so this is the address of the stack pointer, okay. which will contain the uh, local variable, this one here, this location here in the main memory. Okay. And you, of course you can uh, view the memory mappings here. So you have the code segment, uh, the, the code section, the data section, the VS section, and you can see that the stack is always located at the top of the memory area. Okay? So that's, do you have questions at this point? None. Okay? So how are processes created? Okay? So the next uh, topic is the next section is about the API, process API. So an operating system is basically somehow a collection of library functions. Right? And it provides certain uh, functions that will allow you to create, destroy, uh, uh, study, or examine the characteristics of the process. Just by running the top command, okay, if I run the top command, will all uh, this top command actually uses the process API of the operating system okay and if I say if I use the PS command okay so the PS command actually uses the different uh, API for the process related API for the operating system okay? for latest example so what are the categories of the different uh, uh, APIs? So we have the create, okay? so we have system calls. Again, when we talk about API in the context of the operating system, we talk about system calls. What's the difference between a system call and an ordinary function? Okay? 
system called runs in a higher privilege at a higher privilege level compared to ordinary user functions. You have to remember that. Okay? Uh, mas powerful ang system call kasi meron siyang mga instructions na pwedeng i-execute na hindi pwedeng i-execute ng ordinary user-defined function. Okay? So, what are the categories? Three, eight, right? So, the first one category is uh, a set of system calls that will allow you to create processes in Linux or in Unix system that will be the fork system call. Okay? We'll discuss that later. So the fork system call allows you to create a new process. Destroy a process, so it halts a runaway process. I showed you a while ago the kill command. When we run the CPU in the background, it's still running. So uh, we can actually kill that using uh, the kill command. Okay? And the kill is actually a, a system call, part of the process API to destroy the process. Then the next one is waiting. Right? Uh, usually, in an operating system, there is called a, pro a process tree, okay? wherein you have a parent process and a child process. Uh, process usually have a parent-child relationship. When, when a process is created, it is created from a parent. And the wait uh, API allows for a parent process to wait for a child to finish. Okay? So it's also part of the process API. And the next one is uh, miscellaneous control. Right? So miscellaneous control, for example, you can uh, uh, make a process block okay, for a while. Okay? So there are, there are other things that you can do about processes. So you can have you can block a process. Okay? So that's part under that's one under miscellaneous control. Okay? And lastly, uh, get information about the process. Okay, so, statistics basically about the process. So, this PS command, for example, will allow you to uh, observe the properties of the processes. So, halimbawa, kung sino yung owner ng process na yun, okay, ano yung process number niya, ano yung memory na ginagamit niya, kailan siya nag-start, as ano yung full path kung saan nag-originate yung process na yun. So, ito yung siguro tatandaan nyo. This is the program Pag nag-PS kayo, this is the program where the process was created. Nakalagay yan dyan. Okay? So, it's, uh, it's, a good, it's good to, to, to remember that. Okay? So, let's talk about process creation. Okay? Uh, so, dito, how is a process created? So, I think na-mention ko na rin naman to a while ago. So, you have the program being loaded into the memory. So in the case kanina, that's last CPU. Okay? Ang naglo-load ng process no is basically the shell. Okay? It's the shell. Okay? So, uh, there is a field or there, there is a field in the in a process that in the process control block that this that points to the parent uh, process okay so but the point is when you type that slash cpu it is the shell the bash shell that executes that loads the uh, it invokes a system call that loads the cpu executable to memory okay so the, the operating system will allocate uh, memories for that okay and then usually in an executable format, so it's an ELF format. So, for example, uh, file CPU. If you type file CPU, you'll see that the file format for the executable is an ELF 64-bit. Okay. And uh, OS performs the loading process lazily. Okay. So before. If you have a very large program, everything gets loaded into the memory. Okay? But modern operating system, they perform that in a, a lazy manner. When you say lazy manner, hindi lahat na nandun sa, ano, sa uh, program na nasa disk ay nilo-load sa memory. Part by part lang. Pagkailangan lang, sakala siya ilo-load sa memory. You get the idea? We will talk about that when we, when we go to virtual memory management. Right. Right. Then after the program is allocated, is placed in its uh, address space, then the program's runtime stack is allocated. 
So info proc mapping will show you the address of the stack. So it's the operating system will allocate the stack for the process. Okay. So usually, um, um, to be able to uh, to distinguish a program from a process, yung program halos ito lang yung meron. Right? Yung tatlo lang. Yung code, yung date, initialized data, at initialized data. Yun yung nandun sa executable. Pero pag naging process na yan, lalagyan na yan ng stack, ng a program counter, okay, and other information. Okay? So the stack will be used for local variables, parameters, and return address. Okay? Whenever you call a function in assembly, mag-return siya, di ba? After the function, pinupo sa stack yung return address kung kailan, kung saan mag-jump after ng return. Okay? And you can also initialize the stack with arguments pag int main argc argv okay, for the main function. And then the program heap is created. Okay? So yung operating system, meron siyang memory allocator for the heap. Yung ginagamit ng malloc. Okay? So dito yan ilalagay. So it's part of the process creation. Okay? And uh, do some OS initialization tasks. I mentioned a while ago, like uh, opening standard input, standard output, and standard error. Okay. So you get the idea. Okay. And then it, it jumps, the, start the program running at the entry point, namely the main. So kanina, nung nag-GDB tayo, nakita nyo na yung arrow ay nag-point doon sa start ng main. So yun yung pag-start na ngayon, yung pag-transfer ng control ng execution doon sa program na yun, sa, sa main function na yun. Okay? So, ang tawag doon actually ay loading. Okay? Exec, sa, sa Linux, yung exec, ano, exec system call, siya yung nagpe-perform ng loading. Okay? It's the loader. So this is what happens to so the program. You have to call static data. Actually, wala naman wala pang hit yan dyan. Right? Okay. So, this is the memory code. After the so, yeah. okay. the process, and then the CPU. Okay? 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 process abstraction. Pag ni-right click mo yon properties, makikita mo yung stack, etc, etc, part dyan nung ano. So, halos pareho lang sila. But this one is specific to Linux system or Unix system. Okay, you get the idea? Okay. So, we'll stop here and uh, uh, we move on to next meeting sa, ano, sa process states. Okay? So, see you on Thursday. So, please pass your paper. Ah, uh, lampas na ba kayo sa 20? Hindi naman. Nakalampas na kayo. So, pag lampas na, hindi pa dyan yung sa isa. Pwede, uh, baka, may problema tayo sa lamp. 19 pa lang. Ha? 19 pa lang kayo? Oo, oh, makaming absent pa. So, <laughs> sana magkasya tayo sa lamp. Otherwise, mag-drop na kayo. <laughs> Mag-drawless na lang tayo kasi hindi yung mag-drop. Offer to me to next step to the regular, no, regular office. Okay, so see you later, Salam. Okay, you can go. 19 kayo ngayon. So, sana magkasya tayo sa live. Sir, hindi nyo load yung data ng PC manner. Mas mapagal yung tango ng program. Hindi. Hindi naman. Hindi kasi hindi sequential pa rin naman yung pag-execute mo eh. Yung hindi mo nila makakailangan, yung muna i-load mo. Imagine mo, di ba yung disk natin mabagal? So malaki yung file mo, tapos i-load mo lahat yun sa memory. That will take time. So what if you just load a certain block, yung kailangan ng hagat. Tapos, hindi rin ba ah, hindi naman yung lahat gagamitin. Pag yung nilalang block, isa ka mo lang. Kasi may mga program tayo, may mga if statement, di ba? Nagagawin mo lang to pag kailangan. Ipag yung condition na yun ay hindi naman nag-true. 
Especially, hindi mo na kailangan i-load yun sa memory mo kasi hindi naman yun yun yun. Pag kinailangan, at saka mo, siya lang lazy load yun. Thank you, sir. Ano pong gagawin mo sa dahil? Installation tayo lang na mabuntog. Saka... Kailangan ko mong dala po ng sarili. Pwede na, magdala kayo. Hindi ba, baka wala nga. So, may virtual box na siguro. Thank you, sir.